Cat Newton, my boy. Well, it's another day, another dollar. And what we have learned in the last, this weekend, Hank, good evening. What we've learned in the last few minutes and all day today is that Bass is in a lot of trouble. It's completely official now. We were we were skeptical and, and had an idea that it was going to be a little bleak for some of these guys. And the guys that are staying with Bass are going to uh, hopefully do well and, and still be successful. That's what we want. And, and, and throughout all of this, let's hope that everyone is successful. But Major League Fishing has, has really taken it to another level and has really completely demolished everything. Uh, they have accomplished something that I don't think anything anyone thought could be... I don't think anyone thought could ever happen. As of tonight, they have 74 or 75 anglers that have committed to Major League Fishing. And of those, uh, I'm going to do some of these things. I'm going to have to count while you guys are on here. Of the top 50 anglers... Um, of the top 50 anglers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven anglers are staying with Bass Elite, which is really scary. Seven of the top 50 anglers from 2018 Angler of the Year points are staying with Bass. So... What does that mean for Major League Fishing? As of right now, Major League Fishing has... Um, I'll just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 plus anglers, including... Angler of the Year, Justin Lucas. 2017 Angler of the Year, Brandon Palahniuk. Two-time back-to-back classic champion, Jordan Lee. His brother, Matt Lee. Um, of course, you saw, hopefully you saw, the greatest of all time. Kevin Van Dam is now on this. He's announced that he are. he's our. Now, of the 38 that I just mentioned, there is one, two... Three, four, five that are uncommitted. Um, yeah, it, it's they catch twelve fish, but they're planning on Jason on going to bigger fish areas, and so we're supposed to see them catch more fish, and hopefully it's exciting. If you watch the major league fishing in the past, the the whole format is is really good, and hopefully it continues to get better. Uh, I think they have. I think what they've done is they've put together a list of anglers that I don't think any of us thought could happen. From, I mean, from your Justin Lucas, Josh Bertrand. I mean, in the top, it, just in the top 15 people, the only person that hasn't signed on is Mark Daniels Jr. And he's uncommitted. They have 14 of the top 15 anglers that came out. And if, they, if you go on top 20, they have... Uh, the only two that they, they have, only two people in the top twenty are staying with the elites, and that's Chris Zelday and Seth Fielder. Two people are uncommitted, so there's sixteen out of the top twenty. It's it's absolutely a manslaughter. Honestly, it would it's unbelief. Yes, KVD is going to Major League Fishing. This is something that I think everyone knew in the past. Kevin's had a big influence on how they how they do it and he's had a big influence on how they're going to proceed and make major league fishing even better you want to there isn't you want to know the real reason jason that they're moving it's it all comes down to money there's a better opportunity on major league fishing to make more money um we had i can open it up and kind of go through some of it i wish i could show it to you but i can't uh there's some just some some regular things that that bass and major league fishing put out like for example um 
with 80 anglers on the Bass Pro Tour, the average payout per angler is going to be $122,875. For the Elite Series, the average payout per angler is $75,000, $75,388. So there's a drastic influence on how much money is going back into it. That's why it isn't that they're bailing. They've been put in this thing to make so that they can make more money. Like just just another example. For first place, they get a hundred thousand dollars in major league fishing and bass. Second place for major league fishing is seventy thousand dollars. On the elite series, it's twenty five thousand dollars. So there's a whole bunch more money in the top ten for major league fishing. They're going to pay out. $410,000. On the Elite Series, they're going to pay out $236,000. So there is way more money that's going back into the anglers. And really, the more the anglers are making, the, the anglers have a better chance to make it. In the past, there's been a ton of anglers that can't succeed on the tour because they just don't make money. Now, Elite going back and paying everybody $2,500 per, per, uh, per tournament per person is a great great thing but there's a a ton more money that's going into this just like in the championship here here it is here's this is this is it per the the major league pro tour championship the average angler is going to make forty one thousand forty one thousand dollars on the Bassmaster classic the average angler makes nineteen thousand seven hundred and eleven dollars so they're doubling it right off the beat, off the thing. The entrance fees, good question, Hammer. The entries fees are pretty much the same. They are going to be uh, about five thousand dollars, a little bit more than that. Um, the cup stuff, all that stuff, is pretty close to the same. But the thing is, is that there's a lot more money in this. Championship uh, winner, they're going to win. What happened? My internet went down. Hopefully, your guys are there. Uh, in the championship round, the internet, uh, the the winner is going to win half a million dollars for major league. In the Bassmaster, they win three hundred thousand dollars. So, when you start comparing all of these things that uh, that happen, it's really a drastic difference in in all of it. Now, here's the major thing that that. Uh, that is going on. The Bassmaster shows up for 60 hours of combined programming throughout all of the stuff. That's 30 hours on ESPN, ESPN2, 30 hours on ESPN Classic. The So they have about 60 hours. Major League Fishing is putting out 650 hours of angler time. 650 hours. That's 10 times the amount. That's where this is. That's where all this starts to get scrambled, and there's all sorts of other stuff. They will have more cameras on boats. They're doing all sorts of stuff. They're going to do a major league fishing live, so you'll be able to stream it online, just like Bass does live, which is unbelievably popular. But the, you want to know what it comes back down to? It comes back down to that big old money. Uh, major league fishing is going to put out more money than Bass does, and so that's why most of these anglers are going. And some of them are going because Kevin Van Dam was going. You want to compete against the best. And right now, when you look at, I mean, here, this is a list of, of anglers. All of the red, this is the top 46. I know you can't read it, and I'm sorry. This is 46. All of the red is going to Major League Fishing. All the black is undecided, and the blue is staying with Major League Fishing. It's staying with Bass. Sorry. So that's page one. Page two, you can see where all of it starts to get black and some blue. These are undecided anglers, and some of them didn't get invited. But still look at all of this. So this is, and even on the third page, which is the top 110 anglers, there's still a lot of red on there. It's, it's unbelievable. Okay, so locations. Uh, what about the locations? Is the circuit better for the anglers and for the fishing? Well, we have technically, we have a, not a schedule that we can really, uh, I don't know, 
how to say it. Um, we have a schedule of when the tournaments are going to be held. There is one in January, at the end of January. There's one in the middle of February. Uh, so I would imagine those are some in Florida, which is going to be great. Um, but we don't know exactly where it is and when the final championship is. But Major League Fishing is doing all their best to make it sure that they're fishing at places where they're going to catch giant fish. Uh, what's the cutoff at MLF to making money to your uh, finishing spot in the tournament? They're going to pay the top 40 anglers every um, every tournament. So the top 40 are going to get paid. Now how they're going to do it is they're going to put 40 anglers out on the first day, the first and third day, and then they're going to put 40 anglers out on the second and fourth day. They're going to knock those down to 40 complete anglers for day five. Then they're going to move on and it's going to get. Now the tournament is much longer. I, I need to say that. The tournament is seven days of fishing now. Uh, they're going to have two practice days and seven days of fishing. Where in bass, they are pre-fishing from maybe Saturday or Sunday through Thursday. They practice. And then Thursday through Sunday, they fish. Now, that is, now that's a huge difference. So seven days of fishing is a lot harder than, than uh, four days of fishing. But you got to remember, you still have two days off in that process. They will pay the top 40 anglers, and the top 40 anglers are going to make a lot more money. Where on bass, everybody is getting paid. That's the big difference. Um, I think I think you're going to see that the Major League Fishing and the Bassmaster, you, you find out quite fast that Major League Fishing, the payouts are astronomical compared to um, the bass. But everybody makes money at bass. Just like... When, when you go to, here's, I have a thing that I'm looking at. Major League Fishing, the Tour Championship. So first place is going to make, for MLF, is going to make $500,000. Compared to $300,000 for first place at the Classic. Second place wins $100,000 compared to $50,000 at the Classic. Uh, and then it goes 80, 40, 50, 30, 45, 25, 40, 22, 35, 21, 5, 30, 21, so overall, the top ten people the top ten people are going to be paid nine hundred and thirty four thousand dollars, where the classic pays five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So when you start comparing championship compared to all this other stuff, it's really a big payout, and that's that's really why they're moving. I know a lot of guys saying it's evol this is where the evolution of the sport is going. The problem though is that the sport hasn't evolved in thirty years, and that's where we, all of us, um, need to make a difference. We need to get the. We need to be more involved with uh, getting kids out into the outdoors and and things like that because that's that's really important. Um, our our good friend Ken Duke has a stat that said the first Bassmaster, three hundred thousand people watched that this year on ESPN. 300,000 people watch the classic. So there's been no um, change in in anything. So this is a, a huge change that gives more money, that gives more time, uh, more airtime, and hopefully opens up the, the, the industry to a more youthful crowd because that's where we have to go. We have to get our youth involved in fishing. If it's competitive fishing or if it's just getting them as my... And I say this all the time, all the time, fat cat Newton off their iPads and into the, uh, and into the lily pads, high kick. We need to do it. If there's something to be said about that, you have to get the kids involved. So hopefully this will get more people introduced into fishing, more people introduced into tournament fishing, and hopefully it'll expand the whole thing for everyone. But major league fishing is absolutely killing it. They have apps they have done something we have speculated on the show on saturday for two cons for for many hours um and it's really it's crazy i'll get back to the where do i think the new bass elites are going to be drawn from they're going to take people from the opens and they are going to be offering that i should say i do know that they've been offering a lot of people um extra money to stay with elites and then they just unfortunately are still making the move some of the guys aren't 
I mean, f- some of them are, were offered 50000 a 100000 There's even been rumors of people being offered $250,000 to stay with Bass. Chef Bob and Chef Byron, Johnny from the North, Team Fish and Florida Radio Gumbo. Sorry, I had to th- give a shout out. So yeah, the the they're going to draw people from the elites from right now, from the opens, and then bring them up too. Now the problem though is, is that it's so far into almost the season, into the start of the 2019 season, which is going to start in January, that they have to offer these guys these invitations immediately, and they have to be able to go out there and get sponsorships. And I really think that's where this is going to be hard, because usually they only take the top three or five people and they introduce they offer them a position onto the elites here they're going to have to offer up to 35 or 40 people to get into the elites because as it looks right now there could be 60 people from the elites being taken off 60 humongous anglers it was gonna this was gonna be like it is so I uh, think it will be based on open ranks by previous elite standings. I think it will be from last year, and we'll see how it is. Will Bass offer uh, FLW Anglers to jump? They have they have offered people already. If you've done well, in the uh, like John Cox, our good friend from the radio show, he has done well. They've offered him an elite spot. He's just stayed with FLW. In fact, today, the biggest, I mean, it was amazing to hear Justin Lucas and Brandon Palnick, but the surprise of the day is that FLW pro Andy Morgan is switching from FLW to MLF. And the reason why that is amazing is because he was offered it, declined it, got re-offered, and took it on the second on the second one. And he is a stud. Hands down, the guy can flat out fish. So yes, they're offering uh, uh, Heath, they are offering people from the FLW to move over to Elites. Uh, we will probably see an influx of some people, but not a lot. Um, there's some people that have been in the elites in the past that have done that have been like kind of kicked off, you know, because they they don't let certain people up. That now they're asking those people if they want to come back. So we're going to see some older anglers coming back that might have a little bit of a name, and that they're going to come back into the elites. But right now, Bass is going to have a hard time fielding 80 anglers, 80 good anglers. But the people that are staying, like. Seth Fielder, which is a really great anger. Chris Zaldane, Cliff Perch, Micah Frazier, Bill Lowen, you know, Dollar Bill, that guy can fish. Uh, Keith Combs, Chad Pipkins, those are seven, Those are the people in the top 50 that are staying. Those guys have an opportunity to make a lot of money. I mean, they really do. They're great anglers, and they can get on there and fish against anybody. And they some of these guys got invitations for MLF and just declined them. But those guys are going to have a lot of a lot of backing behind them with Bass and the whole their whole media campaign. And it'll be great to see how they do, but they'll everyone's going to say, "Well, they're not competing against the best." And that's that's not the truth. I mean, Kevin Van Dam's the best. Let's that's it's Kevin Van Dam and there's a lot of anglers up there, but Bass is still going to probably be just as successful. Isn't Major League Fishing catch and release? Yes, Major League Fishing is catch and release. They'll catch, um, take a photo, not take a photo. They'll weigh it right there with a a person. uh, And then they track it on an iPad. And then it puts up. And 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 if you didn't know this, Major League Fishing is going to put on their website. They're going to offer fans to come on and be part of the marshals. So I don't know if that will be something you have to pay for. But you'll be able to be out there and see how it goes on not the on the tour events and and that's it how many years can kvd stay on top as long as he keeps fishing he's if you've ever met kevin he's the greatest of all time for one reason he is unbelievably competitive he wants to learn what everybody else is doing and he is just unbelievable most humble guys in the world and he is just down to earth and kicks ass and there's nothing else you can say about him i don't think he'll quit for another 15 years and i think he'll i think the other thing is he's going to hang out with major league fishing to make sure to make sure that they're successful and that is the biggest thing now i haven't talked to kevin about this i wished him i congratulated him the other day because he got uh selected into the 
the Hall of Fame, the Freshwater Hall of Fame, and everybody knows that he is the greatest of all time. That's why he's the GOAT. So Kevin being on there is is great. But like I said, the list says it for itself. All the red in the top here, here, 46 are heading to, to Major League Fishing. And nobody thought it was possible. I mean, that we've had I've had so many conversations with elite anglers and other people that we, there were some people we knew were going. Kevin Van Dam and some of these other guys. We were sure we're going. You know, tomorrow we find out what happens. Tomorrow at six thirty or seven o'clock on the show Ike Live, he'll be announcing where he's going. Is he fishing major league fishing? Is he fishing the elites? Is he retiring? I don't know. But that is an option for him now that his new show comes out this not this Friday but next Friday on uh, Nat Geo. So look for that. I think uh it's called uh, Fish Something in the City. So um Fish in Your City or something like that. It, it, and I got to see the first episode today and it's absolutely unbelievable. It's a great fishing show. Great. Now Ike and Ellie doesn't respond to my emails, so I'm not really too happy with him. And he needs us now to promote his thing, and I shouldn't be promoting it. Uh, are we still going to the Classic this year? I think this is the last big Classic. I don't think you can miss this one. This is the first time that... This is the last time you're going to see all these guys fishing for the title that all, all of them want. And, and now, with... Because really, there's only 34, 35 people that are going to make the classic imagine that of the 35 all but let's just say six aren't with mlf so there's an unbelievably great chance that the winner of this year's classic isn't going to be fishing the elites and that's a story amongst itself justin lucas going and brandon palinick and jordan lee those were huge today. Huge. Because really, I didn't think there was a way in hell that Jordan Lee could be coming to Major League Fishing. I didn't think there was a way in hell. I would have put money down. Jordan Lee doesn't go. He is going to Major League Fishing. If you don't know the list, there's lots of lists online. You can go to wiredtofish.com. You can go to majorleaguefishing.com. We actually have our own Instagram, and I've been trying to keep track of it and keep up to date uh, as you can see, this is today's list, and this is la- yesterday's list. Uh, yesterday's list shows the world ranking of each angler because I thought that would be very important on where their world ranking was compared to where they stood in in Major League Fishing and in the Bass Elites. So, yes, I do, I do the Instagram page. It's Instagram.com slash FishingFLRadio. You can do that. We do. I've been trying to in, put it on Twitter and then also on our Facebook page right here. Uh, if you participate or you've been doing comments and you want a prize pack, you need to private message us your name and just say, hey, I participated in this Facebook Live and Steve told me that I needed uh, that I should get some prize packs. We have all sorts of prize packs we have to give away. And you want to know if you're participating, we'd rather them give to you because they don't cost us anything. So we'd rather them give them to you, and you can use these great products from a lot of great companies. I got the best pair of sunglasses, by the way, today. The best pair of Coastal sunglasses. They are fantastic. I could go get them. Right now. man, it take me too long to go get them. They're in the other room. So, so anyway, go on there. We'll try to do another Instagram Live or another Facebook Live during the week when we, uh, when we, when we get more information. Um, so... Thank you for everyone for listening and participating and, and being on here. We do appreciate it. Listen to the show Saturday at Third Line Monitor. Listen to the show Saturday morning, 6 to 9 a.m. We are going to be talking about that. And we have Justin Lucas on the show at 8 o'clock. That was, I'm not supposed to be telling anybody that, but I'm just, if you're watching this, you should know Justin Lucas, Angler of the Year, is going to be on at 8 o'clock. And there's a- this is Jim. Jim loves fishing boating, anything to do with time on the water, whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important, 
and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about tackle webs. With tackle webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels, wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at TackleWebs.com.